Life is a way of pulling you in all different directions. And my life is no different. In between editing videos, teaching lessons online, and drinking coffee, there's been very little time for drum practice lately. But what if I made time? What would happen if I practiced the exact same thing for 30 days? What difference can 10 minutes make? Let's find out. What's happening guys? Welcome into today's video. A little bit different today, but I'm sure you're gonna like this one. So I was filming a video last month and I came across a problem. The video was linked up here. It was all about stick control. And there was one part of that that I could just, I just couldn't play. I just could not get it together. No matter how many times I did it, no matter how many takes I did, it didn't sound the way I wanted it to. I always tell my students to analyze and annihilate. Find the problem, the real problem, that's stopping you playing this thing the way that you want to, and annihilate that, focus on that. But I've been neglecting my own advice, so time to change that. The problem I found wasn't the lick itself, which is right, left, left, kick, by the way. It was those two middle notes, those left hand doubles. No matter how I played them, where I played them, in six stroke rolls, grooves, fills, Swiss triplets, you name it, it didn't sound, they don't sound good. They just sound awful. So for this experiment, I thought, why not focus on those two notes? And just for 10 minutes every day, work on those two notes. To start with, I needed to come up with a stock of exercises, mainly to avoid boredom, because just playing the same thing for 30 days is gonna be really, really boring but to still make them connected and to use them in different ways, the ways that I will use them on the kit when I'm playing music. So I came up with pad exercises. I came up with um, kit exercises based around inversions and orchestrations. And I came up with some groove exercises that allowed me to explore this in a slightly more usable way, shall we say. So things started pretty well. I practiced every day and it started to come together pretty nicely. The speed increased, the idea of practicing every day, um, which I used to do a lot, became quite easy. It's like a small little chunk of time. And I started to feel speed and control improve. There was a definite burn happening, as you can see in the footage, but you know, I was starting to make some progress. I was starting to feel good. After the first week was over, I decided to challenge myself by changing up the exercises a little bit. Firstly, with a dynamic exercise, and secondly, by moving this around the drum kit. This dynamic exercise really challenged me and forced me to slow down, which is actually pretty common with this kind of deep exploration. Just because you can do it fast at, with no dynamics or no orchestrations or no inversions, doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be able to replicate that speed when you change the exercise. And part of this deep exploration and this deep practice is to know that thing inside out. Dynamics is one way. Now moving around the kit, I could start to really feel the benefit that the previous week had done. Sitting on the pad and just focusing on it meant that I didn't have to think about or worry about those two notes coming out and it started to sound better in my opinion. If I'm honest, I start to skip some days if I had a busy schedule, um, teaching or having editing or even some family time. But I try to subscribe to this two day rule that Matt Diavella says. Now, if you haven't checked out Matt Diavella, he's a YouTuber, filmmaker, real proper person. And he's got a great channel all about habit building and all that sort of stuff. So check it out, I'll link it below. But his two day rule is basically when you're trying to form a habit, when you're trying to make something stick, don't miss more than two days in a row. So if you miss one day, that's fine, but you've got to do it the next day. You've got to force yourself to do it the next day. We're human, it doesn't always work, but I definitely found that subscribing to that and focusing on that helped me keep on track with this. Now week three, I started to move things around, starting to work on groove settings and fill settings and just seeing how I can come 
come up with some new ideas. The groove part was really, really hard. Actually slowing it down and having to count all the different things while moving a bass drum and all that sort of stuff with the dynamics. Man, that was tricky. Super beneficial. I can see how I could create some really cool grooves from that. But again, I had to slow down, force myself to keep that metronome slow and focus on playing things accurately and not just get ahead of myself thinking that just because I can do it one way, I am going to be able to do it this way. So, so far three weeks in, it's all going swimmingly, I'm making progress, I'm feeling good. But week four hits and I start to work on inversions and things start to fall apart. Now for me, that's pretty common. Inversions and specifically switching between them is definitely a Achilles heel of mine. It always sucks. So I kind of expected that, but I make some progress. And as Denzel says, Progress, not perfection. So the end of the 30 days is today. And what is this month showed me? Well, firstly, it showed that a small amount of effort, of focused effort, can actually make a big difference. It can be easy to think that you need to practice for four to five hours a day to be a great drummer, that anything less than that is a waste of time and there's no point in you doing it and you may as well not try. But actually just 10 minutes focused on the right things, your weaknesses, things that you cannot do over a long period of time will help you progress as a drummer. You might not progress as fast as four to five hours, but you will still make progress. And that's kind of the whole point is just keep pushing forward. Secondly, you need a plan. It can be easy to just go into something and hope for the best, throw notes up in the air and hope that they land. But I've talked about on this channel and on my website about needing to have a plan, sit down, practice before you go in, know what you're gonna do before you start practicing. And that way you can start to make real progress. So I planned out the exercises I was gonna do. I used my practice diary. I made sure that I didn't, you know, go in there not knowing what I was gonna do. And that really helped push me forward in that small 10 minute chunk. Third and finally, focusing on one specific weakness can have a profound effect on your drumming. Instead of just working on, you know, being a musical magpie and practicing jazz one day and double bass the next, practice one thing, give it time, keep working at it until you've done it and then move on. That kind of focused analyze and annihilate thing is really powerful and you can make some real progress in a short amount of time. So when you next come across something that you can't do, don't run away from it. Focus on it, analyze it, annihilate it, and just keep practicing and working at it until you have mastered it. Doing that over and over again will make you a better drummer and a better musician, and you'll get more enjoyment out of this instrument. Instead of focusing on your strengths, focus on your weaknesses, no matter how painful it is. So that'll do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different for me, but I just wanted to let you into my process of how I would work on something and how we would work on something if we were teacher and student. If you did enjoy this video, remember hit subscribe, hit that like button and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. But until next week, happy drumming, stay safe and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Now if I'm honest, I started to skip some days when I had a busy, busy,